They say growing old is never easy. But of all the ailments we endure, few are as frustrating, pervasive, and deadly as the disease that steals the mind. Alzheimer's disease. The illness deteriorates vital brain functions, robbing patients of their most basic cognitive abilities. As the disease progresses, the familiar becomes foreign. Friends and family turn into strangers. Alzheimer's often leaves patients lost in a draining pool of memories. The frustration, depression, agitation, and not being able to find what they want in their own mind is just, just devastating. In 1995, Dr. Rudy Tanzi discovered Alzheimer's susceptibility genes. He knows at the moment, managed care is about the best Alzheimer's patients and their families can expect. But some Alzheimer's researchers, including Professor Christian Holscher at England's Lancaster University, believe the foundation for treatment and perhaps even a cure may lie in our existing inventory of drugs. We have finally cracked it. I'm very optimistic that we can produce a drug that generally helps people with Alzheimer's disease. Highlighting and improving upon certain properties of currently available diabetes drugs, Holscher says is the key. And what these drugs do is they normalize a type of growth factor in the brain and help the cells to repair themselves and improve on the Alzheimer development, at least in animals. If we were to think of our brain as our biological computer, Alzheimer's damages our data banks and eventually shorts out the whole system. It's more than memory loss, it's the inability to learn. Because really what's happening initially is that as you're taking in the information in the moment, you can't register it. In a healthy brain, neurons communicate through electrical charges and the release of chemicals across tiny gaps or synapses. Other cells, called astrocytes and microglia, keep the brain clean sweeping away unwanted debris. In an Alzheimer's brain, excess proteins called beta amyloid and tau build up, creating what's called plaques and tangles, essentially choking the neurons from the inside. The tangles spread and infect healthy nerve cells. Eventually, inflammation sets in, creating a downward spiral in the ability of neurons to communicate and the brain actually shrinks. Still, despite knowing the mechanics of the disease, scientists remain largely at a loss as to how to prevent, treat, and cure Alzheimer's. But Professor Christian Holscher and his team think they may be on the verge of something monumental. We saw clear improvements. We can look at a lot of different parameters and we found that there was a clear improvement in this study. Since type 2 diabetes is a leading risk factor of Alzheimer's, Holscher wanted to investigate the impact of insulin. It's like a signal to the neurons to take up energy, to grow and to repair. So if the signal is missing, then the neurons start to suffer. So we thought maybe the drugs that are already on the market to treat diabetes, perhaps they could be helpful to avoid this development happening in the first place. While uncommon, drugs developed to treat one condition have found other applications. Recent studies had already shown positive results of some diabetes drugs to combat ailments of the brain, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So Holscher took the next step, developing a next-generation drug that targets multiple mechanisms. And this drug is an improvement over drugs that are currently on the market to treat type 2 diabetes. So this new drug that we are testing actually activates three different types of receptors and signaling pathways. And it looks like that this means that the protective effect 
is better, is larger. Conclusions were reached thanks to three groups of test mice and their varying abilities to learn and remember. The wild type ordinary mice are very quick, but the transgenic mouse, which expresses human genes that produce these amyloid plugs, they're not great, they're slow. But if you then treat this Alzheimer mouse with a drug, you can see that the speed at which they learn is just as fast as that of a normal mouse. So this demonstrates that this drug can protect learning and memory formation. Additional analysis shows increased synaptic activity in the brains of the treated mice, a reduced rate of amyloid tangles and plaques, and diminished tau buildup as well, all encouraging signs. The fact that we can improve all these important parameters in the brain which drive the disease gives us the hope that this drug can actually stop the disease in the human brain. And it can even repair some of the neurons, bring them back to a functional state and hopefully can bring back some of the impairments that we see in the patients. Of course, that's not to say that treating diabetes will treat Alzheimer's. It's much more complicated than that. We have tested quite a number of diabetes drugs which work very well to treat diabetes, but they do not do anything for the brain. So the class of drugs that we are working with is a subgroup, it's a special class of drug, not just any diabetes drug. And they seem to be working while others don't show this protective effect. To prove successful, this new and still unnamed drug must move from mouse models to human clinical trials. Will Holscher's triple receptor treatment work on people the same way? The answer requires more testing and time. Unfortunately, though, time isn't always a reliable ally. According to the Alzheimer's Association, someone develops the disease every 66 seconds. So the amyloid and the tangle pathology we now know it begins 15, maybe 20 years before symptoms of the disease. So all of us, virtually all of us, with some exceptions, again, genetically, after 40 years old, we're making plaques and tangles. So the question is, when do you make enough plaques and tangles to trigger inflammation and the disease? Today in the United States alone, more than five million people live with Alzheimer's, a number that's expected to more than triple by the year 2050. And as America ages demographically, the costs of caring for those with Alzheimer's will also skyrocket astronomically. The numbers provide critical and clear motivation for researchers to find a cure. And even if funding continues to be a fight, researchers like Tansy remain optimistic. We'll have a program for eradication based on early prediction, early detection, and early intervention. But I think for those who have the disease, I think in my lifetime, we'll at least have a cocktail of drugs that will stop the disease from progressing, stop it in its tracks. To reach that goal, scientists continue to travel multiple paths of inquiry. Some show great promise, but Professor Hosher believes he's on the right track. You want to have as many approaches as you can, as you can fund, because then you increase the chance of something really working out. However, so far, we have nothing that can compare to this type of study. So I think this is going to be really good. We're going to see something that genuinely will make a difference in patients.